Well, we've, we've disagreed with the government in a whole range of areas, way back nine years ago. I said, no, it, you personally, yes, it, rather said, than prime time detail, you personally, what is it about you, Andy Kenny, that would that, make you a better teacher than think, Brian I think, I've got, I think I've got the hunger and the energy, because I know what we can do to move our country forward. It's not just about giving people hope. It is about demonstrating personal leadership. I was out yesterday on the Navan Road talking to the siblings and the parents of severely and profoundly intellectually affected people. And they are the victims now of government cutbacks in terms of respite. And when I raised this in the Dáil during the week, the Taoiseach uttered the word fool. Well, if the, if the analysis from the leader of the country is that if I raise as leader of the opposition an issue as sensitive and as personal as that, and that that's deemed to be foolish, then either somebody is guilty of, of gross arrogance contempt or is out of touch completely. Because I saw that picture in the Navan Road and that's a wonderful place and they do such wonderful yes. work. But the problem is, I suppose, you accept that four billion has to be squared, three billion next year. You've opposed everything the government has been not doing. True. Well, this week alone, if you take no. the disability you have, mm -hmm. uh, what would you not, do? I mean, how would you bridge that gap? Well, we didn't oppose everything from the government. We supported the government, the, the bank guarantee. We pointed out this week how there were so many other options that government could have taken from entertainment allowances to uh, serious votes that could have been cut in different departments to save the money to keep the respite available. It's like you're against for... cuts in disability that they did. But not only you're that, against the property tax. Correct? Yes. Not only that, you're but not last, sure about water charges. You're going to some kind of meeting. So no, I wanted to ask no, you, sure. how would you bring get Sorry. the money? We're very sure about water charges. Last year, we produced an alternative budget, taking out four billion. We said we would we would leave the first thirty thousand of every public servant salary in the country without cutting it. We wouldn't take money off children, off the blind, or the disabled. And we said our preference would be to make cuts in current spending, to keep the capital program intact, which means you provide infrastructure and jobs, every billion you cut is 10,000 okay. jobs gone. and I hear but, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But I suppose what people worry about is if your own front bench don't feel that you're able to deal with our economic situation right now, maybe the people of Ireland are worried that you would end up being Tisha because we no, need very safe I don't think you, steering you, at this stage. Like, our, 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 our disagreement is over and finished with. That's done. The party have decided. We're well, have they? But, OK, on that, I thought no, but we're, John Vesey now. was now no, breaking it today, wasn't he? The long grass we're is finished. still there. The long grass is all cut and shorn. And <laughs> people, there's no is room it? for any negativity Are in this Are you sure of that? Anymore. Yes, I am. And I'm looking forward to the next election, which, in my view, will be the daddy of them all. And we, we cause excitement around this country in winning uh, that people have not seen in the Fine Gael party for 28 years. It's been that length since we won a general election. We did well since 2002 in locals and Europeans and the last general. But we're going to win the next one and win it big. And How I mean business feel, in Africa. Seriously, you've built the party up. I remember mm. saying that in prime time. It was kind of brutal. It looked like they were going to drop you just when you were very close. Yes, they'd give us how, the last rights. But how did it feel for you personally? Mm to look like it was going to be robbed from you at the last hurdle. It's, uh, you, you see, be you, honest you, you can't. About I am, I, yourself I am, personally. I'm being completely honest with you. You can't predict what the people will do in any, in any constituency because it depends on the circumstances, the quality of the candidates and the way they perceive them. At the end of the day, the people are the absolute masters here. And let nobody run away with the idea that one individual can transform the country. It doesn't work that way. You've got to have real, uh, really strong organisation, really credible candidates, and your message's got to be clear. Now, we fell down on selling that message in a number of areas on the last occasion. We won't the next time. And finally, when people are listening tonight, those people in the polls who believe mm -hmm. at the moment that Enda Kenny isn't up to being Taoiseach, convince them, is... why should they trust you to be the Taoiseach of this country? Well, um, uh, because uh, I think I've demonstrated a different side to my character in the last month. First of all, it demonstrates sound political judgment. Secondly, you've got the bottle to face up to really serious, really, really serious challenges. And thirdly, you don't panic in times, in situations like that. And you bring that into your politics of leadership at national level. And for me, leadership, as I often said, doesn't come out of a box where you tick, tick off the little things. It means that you, you draw the best out of your team because it is going to take Team Fine Gael to do this. But and do it's, Team Fine Gael trust you? Yes, Team Fine Gael have decided and endorsed by secret ballot, not like some other parties, uh, a situation where they, where they have given approval to me to lead the party into the next election and, uh, in my view, to be the next Taoiseach. Now, it's not about vanity personally. This is about a situation where we challenge the electorate to decide on the next occasion to live either in the land of make-believe or in the land of reality. 
We have been driven up on the rocks economically. The, the, more, the futures of thousands of our children have been mortgaged. Our well, we people know have been that. let down. But it's with those people watching that's interesting, well, who maybe are having know. distressed mortgages, whose kids are mm. emigrating, mm. who aren't sure about NAMO and Anglo. Mm. NAMO and Anglo. But can you reassure them? Because I think that is their big worry mm. when you go out in the streets that you and De Kenny well, have I the think, economic knowledge, yeah. the economic nous to run yeah. this country and to get us out of the mess we're in. But I pointed out to you before, we've had we have thousands of economists, thousands of academics, all speculating, all theorising, all commenting. What's required here is political leadership. The leadership shown by Brian Cowan and by Brian Lenehan both of whom had the wool pulled over their eyes. Brian Lenehan himself said he made a mistake in increasing VAT in the last budget. These have all had the economists at their disposal and all of the academics. What you need is sound political judgment under pressure in the interests of your country. I believe I have that in spades and I want to demonstrate that okay. to the people that we can move this country forward where our young people can have opportunities to have a job in the country if that's what they want, where we look after those who are vulnerable and have no voice, uh, for them, can't speak for themselves, and where our, our elderly people are treated with dignity and respect in their later years. Did you think Unfortunately, the word honour? Never, never. Oh. Never. Not once. When fact, not, be, now, come on, I think the people behind will think this is honest. Nine Mary, of your front bench say Mary, he's not up to the job Mary, and you didn't think the you were honour? The Fine Parliamentary Party is not the front bench or anybody else. They made their choice by secret ballot and they endorsed me and my leadership for the future. We're going into the next election, not with any dissent in our ranks, maybe some difference of opinion. But bit yeah. of long grass? But what would the long grass has been shown and cut? <laughs> I think the long gone, grass is there. Gone. And the point is... This election is on its way, be it 20 weeks or 40 weeks, it's not too far away. I can hear the rumbling in the distance already. And these are the rumbling of the ballot boxes uh, as the people put them out on the tables and okay. they will judge. The government don't want to hold any of the three by-elections, they don't want to hold the Uthros elections, they don't want to hold the referendum on children's rights and they don't want to hold the, okay. the mayoralty in Dublin. They're afraid of the electorate. I'm not afraid. Okay, I welcome well, that Kenny, challenge and look forward to it. Thank you very much. You drove yourself up here tonight. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you very Thank much. You. Stay down.